The video introduces key concepts in pharmacology. The video will cover routes of drug administration. First pass metabolism is an important factor affecting drug bioavailability. Drug half-life determines the duration of action of a drug. The therapeutic index is a measure of drug safety. The video will cover four main topics related to drug pharmacokinetics. The first topic is routes of drug administration, which describes how drugs enter the body. The second topic is first pass metabolism, which explains how drugs are metabolized in the liver before reaching systemic circulation. The third and fourth topics are half-life and therapeutic index, which are crucial for determining drug dosage and safety. First pass metabolism refers to the metabolism of a drug before it reaches systemic circulation. This metabolic process primarily occurs in the liver and gut wall. The liver plays a crucial role in first pass metabolism due to its high concentration of metabolic enzymes. The gut wall also contributes to first pass metabolism through enzymes present in the intestinal lining. First pass metabolism reduces the bioavailability of a drug affecting the amount that reaches its target site. Understanding first-pass metabolism is essential for optimizing drug dosage and efficacy. First-pass metabolism involves the metabolism of a drug before it reaches systemic circulation. Orally administered drugs are absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract and enter the portal vein. The portal vein transports the drug directly to the liver. In the liver, a significant portion of the drug is metabolized. Only a fraction of the orally administered drug reaches systemic circulation after first pass metabolism. First pass metabolism significantly reduces the bioavailability of orally administered propranolol. Oral propranolol undergoes high first-pass metabolism in the liver after absorption from the gastrointestinal tract. The liver's enzymatic activity is responsible for the first-pass metabolism of propranolol. Reduced bioavailability means a smaller fraction of the administered dose reaches systemic circulation. High first-pass metabolism necessitates higher oral doses of propranolol to achieve therapeutic effects. Individual variations in liver enzyme activity can influence the extent of first-pass metabolism. The half-life of a drug is the time it takes for its plasma concentration to decrease by 50%. Half-life is a key pharmacokinetic parameter affecting drug dosage and frequency. Drugs with shorter half-lives require more frequent administration to maintain therapeutic levels. Understanding half-life is crucial for optimizing drug efficacy and minimizing potential toxicity. Half-life is the time required for a quantity to reduce to half of its initial value. A graph illustrates the exponential decay of a drug's plasma concentration over time. The half-life value remains constant regardless of the initial concentration. Understanding half-life is crucial in determining appropriate drug dosages and dosing intervals. Diazepam serves as an example of a drug with a half-life of approximately 30 hours. Half-life refers to the time it takes for the plasma concentration of a drug to reduce by half. After 30 hours, the amount of diazepam in the plasma is reduced to half of its initial concentration. The half-life of a drug is a key factor in determining dosing intervals and duration of effect. 
The therapeutic index is defined as the ratio of the toxic dose to the effective dose of a drug. A higher therapeutic index indicates a safer drug, as a larger dose is required to cause toxicity. Conversely, a lower therapeutic index suggests a more dangerous drug, requiring careful dosage monitoring. The therapeutic index is a critical parameter in drug development and clinical use, guiding dosage decisions. Therapeutic index, TI, is calculated as the ratio of the toxic dose to the effective dose. TD50 represents the dose at which toxicity occurs in 50% of the population. ED50 represents the dose at which a therapeutic effect is achieved in 50% of the population. The formula for therapeutic index is TI equals TD50, ED50. The therapeutic index is a quantitative measurement of the relative safety of a drug. A higher therapeutic index indicates a larger margin between the effective dose and the toxic dose. Drugs with a high therapeutic index are generally considered safer for clinical use. The therapeutic index helps clinicians determine appropriate dosages to maximize therapeutic benefits while minimizing risks. A narrow therapeutic index implies that small dosage changes can lead to significant toxicity. Careful monitoring is essential for drugs with a narrow therapeutic index to ensure patient safety. Penicillin exemplifies a drug with a notably safe therapeutic index. The therapeutic index quantifies the margin between effective and toxic doses of a medication. A high therapeutic index indicates a wide margin of safety for the drug. Drugs with a high therapeutic index, like penicillin, are less likely to cause adverse effects. Penicillin's safety profile allows for broader application in treating bacterial infections. Degoxin is an example of a drug with a narrow therapeutic index. Drugs with narrow therapeutic indices require careful monitoring to avoid toxicity. The therapeutic index represents the range between the effective dose and the toxic dose of a drug. Careful monitoring helps ensure that digoxin remains within its safe and effective range. Drug administration routes include oral, sublingual, intravenous, intramuscular, and subcutaneous methods. Inhalation is a route of drug administration that delivers medication directly to the respiratory system. Transdermal drug administration involves applying medication directly to the skin for absorption. Rectal administration is another route for delivering medication into the body. Each drug administration route offers unique advantages and disadvantages regarding absorption rate and bioavailability. Oral administration involves swallowing a drug, following ingestion, the drug is absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract. Absorption from the gastrointestinal tract is a key step in oral drug delivery. The process of oral administration relies on the body's natural digestive and absorptive mechanisms. Sublingual administration involves placing a drug under the tongue. The drug is absorbed directly into the bloodstream through the tissues under the tongue. This method bypasses the digestive system, leading to faster drug absorption. Direct absorption into the bloodstream allows for a quicker onset of action compared to oral ingestion. Intravenous administration involves injecting a drug directly into a vein. This method provides rapid drug delivery directly into the bloodstream. 
Intravenous administration ensures complete bioavailability of the administered drug. Complete bioavailability means the entire dose of the drug reaches the systemic circulation. Intramuscular administration involves injecting medication directly into a muscle. This method allows for a slower rate of drug absorption compared to intravenous injection. Muscles have a rich blood supply, facilitating systemic drug distribution after injection. The absorption rate depends on factors such as blood flow, drug solubility, and injection volume. Common injection sites include the deltoid, vastus lateralis, and gluteus maximus muscles. Intramuscular injections are suitable for delivering medications that require sustained release or are poorly absorbed orally. Subcutaneous administration involves injecting a drug beneath the skin. This method provides a slower and more sustained release of the medication into the body. The subcutaneous layer contains fewer blood vessels compared to muscle tissue resulting in slower absorption. Slower absorption reduces the risk of rapid spikes in drug concentration. Subcutaneous injections are commonly used for drugs requiring prolonged action, such as insulin. The sustained release minimizes the need for frequent administrations. Inhalation is a method of drug administration that involves breathing in medication. The drug is absorbed into the bloodstream through the alveoli in the lungs. Inhalation allows for rapid absorption of the drug due to the large surface area of the lungs. This method delivers medication directly to the respiratory system, providing localized treatment. Transdermal administration involves applying a drug to the skin. This method allows for slow and continuous drug absorption into the body. The drug is absorbed gradually over an extended period. Transdermal patches provide a controlled release mechanism. This administration method bypasses the digestive system. Rectal administration involves inserting a drug into the rectum. The drug is then absorbed into the bloodstream through the rectal tissues. This method allows the medication to bypass the digestive system. Rectal administration provides a direct route for drug delivery into the body. The bloodstream carries the drug to its target site within the body. Different administration routes offer unique advantages depending on the specific application. Oral administration is convenient, but may have lower bioavailability due to first-pass metabolism. Intravenous administration provides rapid and complete bioavailability, bypassing absorption barriers. Topical administration allows localized drug delivery, minimizing systemic side effects. Each administration route also presents distinct disadvantages that must be considered. Providing drug examples for every definition during VIVAS creates a strong impression. Drug examples demonstrate a deeper understanding of pharmacological concepts. Including specific drug names enhances the credibility of exam answers. Drug examples illustrate the practical application of theoretical knowledge. Memorizing common drug examples aids in quick and accurate recall during exams. Linking drug examples to their mechanisms of action reinforces learning and retention. First-pass metabolism refers to the process by which a drug is metabolized by the liver before it reaches systemic circulation. Half-life is the time required for the concentration of a drug in the body to be reduced by one half. Therapeutic index is a quantitative measurement of the relative safety of a drug. Routes of administration include oral, 
intravenous, intramuscular, and subcutaneous methods. Understanding these pharmacokinetic principles is crucial for effective drug dosing and patient safety.